Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, this image of Jesus wanting to gather all the people of Jerusalem, those who cried out in praise to him, those who cried out asking for healing, and those who cried out calling for his arrest. He wanted to gather them all together like a hen gathers her chicks beneath her wings. As I was preparing, preparing to preach, I heard a story coming out of the massacre in Christchurch in New Zealand. A man had taken his, I think, 11-year-old child with him to prayers, to Friday prayers. And they had prayed, they were praying together, father and son, when the terrorist broke in and started killing. And the son was shot. And the father held his dying son, crying out, God is sufficient. God is my refuge. And he kept on saying that. God is sufficient. God is my refuge. Until his son had died in his arms. Any of us who are parents can identify with the broken heart of that father. Can we also identify with the broken heart of God himself, God our heavenly father? Can we understand or can we even begin to understand the pain that God must feel when God's children, wherever we are, whoever we are, when we choose death, terror, hatred over love, compassion, You don't even need to be a parent to identify with heartbreak. That sense that this is not the way it's supposed to be. This is an insult to God and God's good creation. It's not, not just these these major events, whether it's here at home or across the globe. It's not the great, just all the great big things that go wrong. But in our daily lives, the decisions that we make to abandon God's love for us and to pursue other ways other gods, greed, wealth, fame, power. And when we choose, when we choose to turn our backs on what God offers to us in abundance, everything that we need, God is sufficient as the Father in Christ Church said. 
And when we turn our backs on the abundance of God's care for us and God's will for us, it grieves the heart of God. What I've described, of course, is human sin. Sin. It's one of the things that unites us, that we're all sinners. We may, may not be murderers, we may not be terrorists, but we're sinners. And we grieve the heart of God. But God doesn't abandon us. God doesn't turn his back on us because we have turned our backs on God. God continues to embrace us. God continues to reach out his arms like that hen reaching out her wings to try to gather us back into God's grace. All we ever have to do is to look around us and to know that God is there urging us, inviting us to come back under God's wings and there to experience sufficiency, all that we need. There to experience comfort. There beneath the wings of God to experience forgiveness and to be given new strength to go out into the world that continues to be broken by sin and to go out there and be agents of God's love, of God's forgiveness, of God's compassion. Our hearts our hearts are broken by the tragedy in New Zealand. Imagine God's heart. God who knows the brokenness of all seven billion of us on this planet. God who grieves not just the deaths of 50 but the deaths every day from hunger, from war, from other kinds of conflict, the deaths that this world experiences every day. But God has a response God himself enters into this broken creation. God himself takes on our human flesh. God himself experiences the terrorism of the Roman government, nailing him to the cross. And God says, that's not the final word. Two days later, three days later, the tomb that is supposed to be holding forever and ever this dead God, the tomb bursts open with new life, New promise, new hope for all people. (coughs) 
I would encourage you, especially during this, this coming week, to think of yourselves as being always gathered by God, always brought into communion with God and with one another, where we together celebrate that we are the beloved children of God, the people of God, and that we celebrate together that even in the midst of sin, of brokenness, of tragedy, we celebrate life. We celebrate love. We celebrate God's love for all people. In Jesus' name, amen.